This time on The Adventures of Tarka. We pick up a visiting friend for a tour of some of our favorite spots in Sandblast. We finally get to do some kite surfing, and I finally get to try getting up on the board. And we enjoy our very last sail amongst these islands as we head west to the Panama Canal. Our time in Panama's palm-covered, sandy little sandblast islands will soon be coming to its inevitable end, as the rainy season is quickly arriving, and we want to make our way towards the Panama Canal anyway. But before leaving for good, we're going to make one last lap of this paradise. Our friend Tanya is also joining us, but getting into sandblast without a boat is an adventure that begins in Panama City and involves a long off-road trip to the mountains and jungle and ends with a very wet panga ride. To complicate matters further, we had sailed to the wrong spot due to our communication difficulties here, and had to coordinate with our friends on another boat to figure out which island she had actually been dropped off on. Got a message back from her saying that the pickup should be, uh, it's not confusing, she says Jan Saladu, but then she or he points to a different island, Banadu, in the east. <laughs> okay, that's just wonderful. Um, Okay, I, I don't know, like, we can't do anything about that, but uh, can you let me know if that meant? Soon enough, we were anchored in the right spot and got the dinghy to shore where she was waiting for us. <laughs> we found it! <laughs> Those names are so similar. <laughs> Tanya is only staying with us for a few days, as she currently has a crew job on a boat based out of Florida, and has to get back soon. That's right, her vacation from sailing a big boat is to come sail on a smaller boat with us. What is she thinking? Huh. Well, at least we're ready to go already. We just sailed. So. <laughs> Once she was aboard, we wasted no time and got the sails up, and sailed on our way back to Coco's Bandero, where our Aussie friends were still waiting for us. When he like invites me to go somewhere. Alright, gossip, here we go. Oh hi. <laughs> Just change names so they don't know who we're talking about. <laughs> There's a reason we always dive on our anchor, and this was a good example, as our chain had become wrapped around a log. That meant when we backed down on the anchor to set it, we just tugged against the log and the anchor was still resting on its side nearby. But once the anchor situation was resolved, we came back with the spear gun to take care of that lionfish. I know it probably won't make a difference, but we might as well do what we can. And I think the locals got a whiff of the fresh kill, as it wasn't very long before these friendly neighborhood sharks were back, and they were actually happy to eat the fish once it was dead. However, sharks in the Caribbean don't generally feed on lionfish, as they're a non-native species, and don't really see them as prey. 
Tanya was also pretty excited to see the sharks, and I think she really enjoyed the encounter, even if she was a little spooked at first. We love these animals, but I also think it's telling that we get so excited after seeing only a few sharks, when, probably not so long ago, sharks could be seen far more commonly and in much greater numbers. There are still places like that in the world, but they're definitely becoming fewer and farther between. Overfishing, demand for their fins, and reef loss are all contributing to their decline, which is a shame as they really are wonderful animals. Another beautiful cloudy day in paradise. You can't all be perfect. Friends visiting us on Tarka has other advantages beyond the company, as it's pretty much the only way we get things shipped to us. This time we only had Tanya bring us some small but much needed items, like new polarized sunglasses to see those reefs, and rechargeable batteries to keep our devices happy. We also had Brad and Meg over to give them a proper tour of our little boat, as we're almost always going to their much bigger boat to hang out. What's your scariest thing that's ever happened? Your, your barbecue loader died? Having you, having <laughs> you on the boat. Oh really? <laughs> this is the scariest thing that's ever happened. I'm going to be insta fame now. Oh, it's such a cool shirt, Brad. Where did you get that? <laughs> Cheers, oh, man. Nice wow. <laughs> <laughs> The next day, Brad took the ladies out for a snorkel session, and I stayed back to fix some little projects on Tarkin. There are far more reefs here than we'll ever have time to see. And even with daily trips out to different spots, we're only getting a small glimpse of these incredible ecosystems. Before we knew it, we had to hoist the anchor so that we could get Tanya back to that pickup location for her trip back to Panama. It's pretty strange for us to be moving around so much on such a precise schedule. We've otherwise become so accustomed to playing things by ear, going where we want and when we want, or more often going nowhere at all. And in that way, Tanya has been a good reminder to us that the outside world abides to a routine and a schedule where a day or two here or there can mean a big deal. But she also has an awesome job as professional sailboat crew, so I guess that does beat being behind a desk. Because it's been nothing but cloudy since Tanya arrived, we decided to use the towing generator while sailing to supplement the power from our solar panels. Plus, it's good to get a feel for how much it outputs as a function of our speed. Two 
Tanya had to leave early the next morning, and she kindly took some of our plastic trash with her. He's smuggling out of sandblast. We have no other way to dispose of such items here, and we've seen locals taking trash from other cruisers and throwing it into the mangroves, or worse. And we obviously didn't want that. Anyway, we really wish she could have stayed longer, but we were happy to have the company at all. But on the other hand, and for her sake, we're happy she left when she did, as we soon discovered a clog downstream of our holding tank, and no one wants to be trapped on a small boat during the, uh, the declogging operation. To be frank, if we didn't want to keep a semblance of decency on the boat, I'd honestly consider resorting to the trusty old bucket. After all, you can't clog a bucket. When the toilet was finally fixed, we sailed back to meet up with Brad and Meg, and spent our last few weeks taking full advantage of sandblast before having to say goodbye. And that includes finally doing some kite surfing. This is my first time trying to get up on a board, and Nushta was a good coach. Nonetheless, my first attempts were still pretty hilarious. Eventually, I did manage to make some progress, but only downwind, and I'm sure not turning anytime soon. So, for now, I left it to the professional. But with supplies running out, and with other places still to see, we picked a nice sunny day and began sailing out of Sandblast. <laughs> Along the way we will first stop at the westernmost island group where we will stage our departure for Linton Bay in a few days time. Perception, at 42 feet, is a good deal faster than Tarka. And even though we left before them, it wasn't long before they caught up. We shook out a reef to try to make some better progress. But towing the dinghy just doesn't exactly help, and on offshore passages we always deflate it and fold it up on deck. But we know we're going to want to use it where we're going, and these waters are well protected. We anchored in a well sheltered spot off of a relatively large island. Not a bad spot. And we got our friends here. We're only staying here for a few days. It's not that we don't want to stay longer, it's just that, well, we're getting pretty desperate when it comes to some of our food. Nonetheless, we did make good use of our time here and patched up and strengthened Perceptions Genoa. It's not exactly the ideal working environment, and our tools are simple. But you can't beat the view, and no one's complaining. 
We also spotted some wrecks out on the reef, so Nusha and I took off in the dinghy to go check those out. Nushta had the right footwear, so she walked us the rest of the way once it got too shallow for the engine. We don't know too much about how these particular wrecks got here, but they are not alone. Many of the outer reefs in Sandblast are sprinkled with the hulls of ships just like this. Some are probably the result of getting caught in bad weather on a lee shore. Others might be the sad end of an overconfident skipper making a simple navigational error. And still others could have been vessels that were abandoned or lost in the Caribbean and eventually drifted to shore here. Anything useful or valuable has long been stripped away. And try as we might, this anchor was here to stay. The time to leave Sandblast had finally come. It's not all sad though, as there are new things to be excited about, like the provisioning wonderland that is Panama City, and the wild new places that we get to see. But that will have to wait until next time.